It was March of 2013. I was sitting in my insurance broker's office, it's Angela Arbelina here in Manchester, and we were going over health insurance at the time, which I uh, was like, boring, gosh. But I noticed that um, she, at the, right next to her chair, there was a big bed, and her big um, uh, bulldog was just laying there curled up, and she had her arms stretched out and her hand on her dog's side. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is what I want to do. Like, I always wanted to combine my photography with my passion for dogs. And I just did just, I couldn't come up with an idea that felt right to me. Um, I always kept on coming up with silly ideas, like, you know, people look like their dogs or, you know, kind of silly stuff and it just didn't feel right. But it was just sitting there in her office and seeing her arm on Clemmy's side that I realized that, wow, it's all about relationships. And that's my thing anyway, is, is people and their relationships with other people, with dogs. So I kind of interrupted the whole conversation about the insurance. I said, Angela, and I didn't know her well at all, but I said, Angela, will you be my first subject? I explained what I wanted to do. And she kind of like sat for a sec, she looked at me and she said, I would love to, I'd be honored. But um, Clementine was just diagnosed with cancer a few weeks prior and didn't have very long to live. So we went and photographed the next day with her husband and with Clementine. The pictures were just awesome. They loved the pictures. And I think it was when I looked at these pictures and I had found out that Clementine was about 10 years old. There was just something that was just so special and so dear about the relationship she, that they had with Clementine. And I thought, oh, I bet you it's because she's a little bit older. That's one of the reasons. I decided right then and there that not only did I want to document people and their relationship with their dogs, but there was something pretty special about these older dogs. And that's what I wanted to, to kind of delve into and, and to document. So that's what started it. Oscar. Okay. Sammy. Sammy. We'll take the, all the little Morty. The Morty. How many is that? Oh. Um, one, two, three. That's five. Okay. Six. Okay. What do we do then? Okay. And what I'll do is I'll stand on the other side. Okay. And uh, you can you can hand them over. Sounds good. Come on, Oscar. You want to get okay. Our mission is, in the one hand, to provide lifetime homes for senior dogs in our area, and on the other hand, to educate the world, people in this country, people throughout the world, on the benefits of adding a senior dog to their family. Increasing the adoption rate of senior dogs is our ultimate goal. One. <laughs> in 2010, we adopted a dog named Gracie from the local Golden Retriever Rescue. And we were at a point in our lives where we were looking for some sort of a volunteer opportunity. And it just happened to coincide really well with that adoption of Gracie. So we started volunteering for Middle Tennessee Golden Retriever Rescue at that time. My wife was on the board of directors. And if we hadn't gotten our feet wet with that rescue, uh, I don't think this would have been possible. Immediately wanted to do more. We started doing transports. We started doing home visits. And then in a few months after we, Gracie came to us, there was a golden Pyrenees mix named Bandit who was looking for a home. He was very hospice. He was 15 years old, uh, had a lot of issues, but didn't deserve to be in a vet's office or temporary foster home. He was being bounced around here to there. He was a little bit difficult because he had a little bit of dementia, so foster families weren't keeping him very long and he'd go back to the vet. So there was a huge need for somebody to take on this senior dog just so he could live out the rest of his life. It really showed us how much of a need there was for senior dogs to find homes. So 
So what does today mean to you? I'm excited. All of them get to be together. We get to be together, don't we, buddy? The ones at the house and the ones here. I'm excited. I, I'm not a people person. I really like to be around animals and um, come on, Morty. Any kind of animals, to be honest. And um, this job came open, and I luckily got it. So I ended up working with all these dogs. At first, I didn't realize, but after working with senior dogs, they just want to be loved and touched and fed and. And they've been through a lot. I, I, they have, and they, they need somebody to love them. Our little whopper. We told them immediately, next time a senior comes up that needs this kind of sort of hospice care or end of life care, we'd be happy to help out. So in July of that year, which is just a few months later, we took in Lucy Lou. And Lucy Lou is the dog that you see on all of our advertising. She's the face of Old Friend Senior Dog Sanctuary. And we consider her our co-founder as well. Lucy had been severely neglected. She was about 20 pounds, 30 pounds underweight. She had a terrible bladder infection. She required weeks and weeks of vet care to get her to a point where she could even go to an adoptive home. When we took her, she was on the mend. She still had a bladder infection. We were still treating that, but she was eating and, and doing pretty well. She hit our yard running. She got there, she smiled, she never looked back. And it was Lucy that taught us that these dogs, no matter where they came from, could leave their life behind them, whatever it was, and look to the future. And we could provide the rest of their life for them and that so they would know good for the rest of their life. I've been here since the beginning of October. And how many dogs do you have here? About? Sure, I'm gonna say about 20. They were at our house. They were really our pets at that point. Uh, they just lived with us, and we've still got a few of those dogs, and they're just, they're part of our family. It wasn't for a few years, really until 20, 15, that we really had separate groups. Up until then, we had the dogs with us and the dogs in Forever Foster Homes. In 2015, uh, we started a lease purchase on the cabin next door to our house. We had the intention of making that an addition to what we were doing in our house and having a little bit of a separate space so that we could hire people and do a little more with the public. We purchased it in 2016, early 2016, and just a few months after we purchased the cabin, the neighbors, who had never said anything negative in the past, decided they didn't want us there. How many do we have? Six total, three in the back seat and three in the way back. And we were told we had 90 days to move out. And we did our best. We didn't make 90 days, but our hearts were in the right place. This is where I lose my dignity. Chase, watch what I do. Watch what I do. You do it. Good girl. Good girl. Call, 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 call. Chase, Chase, do what I do. Do it. Stay. We lived on a farm outside of Memphis, Tennessee. But in those early days, I, I had the special warmth with every dog that we had in the family. It was my responsibility uh, to care for the dogs, and, and I loved it. It was natural that I majored in animal psychology. Once out of graduate school with my family, with Sally and, and Debbie and Robin, dogs again became very special in our family. And then in 2004, Christmas, Sally told me, you're gonna get your dog, but you don't, you'll get it this Christmas. You have to wait till May when it's born. Well, lo and behold, we waited, and I was very happy. We went out to the farm several times just to see the puppies, but when finally it was time for them to be weaned, Sally and I sat on a bench, and out of the litter, this little white and black puppy came to Sally's feet 
And so the decision was made which dog to take. It was at that time a German girl, Kaminsky, demonstrated that a dog by the name of Rico had learned the names of over 200 objects. I was excited. They did not tell how they talked, but luckily, we, when we brought Chaser home, our primary goal, uh, at least in my mind, she's going to be a member of the family, but we're going to try to discover how to teach her the names of objects. Here comes the ball. Good girl, good girl. Bring it up. Bring it up, bring it up. She gets three times as much exercise as I do. Ball. This will go on for 30 minutes if we do it. Look at me, John, and smile. Good. It was a passion project for me. I knew what I wanted to do. This wasn't a book at that point. No, this wasn't anything at that yeah. point. This was, this was, I wanted to create a sort of a, um, a group of images that, um, that would tell a story about people and their relationship with their older dogs not knowing where it was going to go, but knowing that I had to do it. I photographed locally here for, I don't know, maybe six months or so. Maybe I photographed 30 people and their dogs. And I, I just thought, I think this project is bigger than just a local project. So I started connecting with friends all over the country. I started connecting with organizations. Maybe a year and a half into photographing that I think several people said to me, I think you need to make a book out of this. So I always envisioned a photograph for the cover to have a person in it, because to me it was all about the relationship. But National Geographic specifically wanted a golden retriever or a lab, and they just loved this photo of Olivia because they felt that when Olivia was looking out from the cover of her book, then anybody who looked at the book would feel that Olivia was partially theirs. It came up at a really good time because we were growing very quickly. Even though it happened in a bad way, it was a catalyst for some really good change. We had initially a lease option that was going to get us out at the beginning of September. Another space, not this space. It's about 10 minutes further from here, and it was a three-story spot, not ideal for us. And in the meantime, right around the end of the week, a property came up that was a garden center, but it was only for sale, and it was too expensive, and we knew we couldn't get it. So we did a fundraiser, knowing that we were moving the next Thursday. We did a fundraiser for flooring and everything that we had to add into the three-story building, and it was phenomenal. Over the Labor Day weekend, we raised $188,000. The average donation was about $50. Facebook or? Facebook, entirely all, all Facebook. Facebook. Well, I use Facebook for everything. On Monday, the contract fell through. And we didn't have a lease place. The guy, the landlord decided at the last minute he didn't want dogs in his three-story building. We decided we were going to try to take the funds that we raised over that weekend and put it as a down payment on the garden center, which is where we are right now. Originally, this was a florist shop. They were here 45 years, and it was really an icon in Mount Juliet. We felt very lucky to be able to get this to, for, for our sanctuary. And so we have um, several yards outside, and as you can see, we're, it's work in progress right now, but we should be done in about two weeks. Our vision here is to create Kind of a little city, little triplex. Uh, the smaller dogs will be in these four foot yards. They're, they're set up to kind of look like a yard for the bigger building and back. We have lots of gates and things so that dogs can be in different areas if they need to be, or we can open everything up and everybody can just mingle and be together. <laughs> Okay, today 
we're moving all of our dogs that are in the calmer and wilder gangs over to the Grandpa's Gardens, which is our new sanctuary. Uh, we want to do it all in one day so that the groups don't start claiming territories. We want to get them mixed together in their new territory. We do, however, have another 20 dogs that are in boarding that we'll be bringing over over the next week or so. We'll probably bring some in tomorrow. And uh, we're going to just start working them in over the next week or two. By the end of the day today, though, the lookout will be empty and the area where the calmer dogs are will be empty and we'll have about 30 dogs at the new place. How do you think they'll respond or acclimate? I think they'll do well. Their friends are there, their caretakers are there. Earlier this week, instead of doing the laundry, we brought the dirty laundry over. Not really disgusting dirty laundry, but uh, things that had their smells on them. And we used those blankets to cover couches and to put in the rooms so that they'd have familiar smells on them so they're not going to feel like they're going to an entirely new place. This door that is right behind you will be completely sealed off because we don't want any points where the dogs are just one door away from the outside. And this room we're just gutting out right now. This will be a big, huge room also for the dogs. The dogs live in a home environment now, and we want them to have a home environment here as well. Although we're setting it up to be a home environment that's specially set up for senior dogs, so it's easier for cleaning and easier for movement, feeding, everything. So it'll be one better than a home environment. All of these rooms and this room and everything will be full of couches, dog beds, throw rugs, everything. Just like rooms in the house. Okay, I can just take one. I've got precious. Okay, who else did you bring? Princess Sophia back here. Okay. Okay, here's Morty. Morty. And precious. No. Hi, precious. It's okay, sweetie. It's okay. Hi. Hi. You're fine. It's good. You're fine. Let's see. Yes, everything's good. Yes, it's all good. Yes. It's a good girl. We'll just see the area that they naturally gravitate to. Yeah, well, once we get everybody here, we may even put everybody together. This is pretty tight, too. And it's pink. Sorry about it, bud. <laughs> so, hi. So, you have arrived. Where are we going, Will? That's it? Just back in here, I think. As long as they're back here. Let's put them in yeah. one room because it's going to be overwhelming to just leave them run back here. Come on, Sophie. Whoops, we're putting them in this first room here. Okay, now. Uh, okay, right. let's get a couple of tents set up for Sammy and practice. I think okay. they'll feel more secure. Okay. A little bit enclosed because that's what they're used to. Here comes Morty. Somewhere in Chaser's fifth month of life, it became obvious to me that Chaser was learning the names of an object on one trial. And this exploded my mind in the sense that we've got to work with this. We've got to work with this. She knows that objects have names. And she knows the cue to enable her to associate the word with the object on one trial. My thoughts were, how far can we go? We've got to go further. We stopped teaching her the names of objects at their fourth year. At that particular time, when we put 20 objects out there and asked her to retrieve each one by name, we found that she was successful most of the time with 100% of the objects. This is close to the thousand. Milk bone, milk bone. The 
There's Milkbone. Good girl. Out, out. Uh, find wiggle worm. Find wiggle worm. Look for wiggle worm. It is wiggle worm. Oh, okay, good. What's that? What you got there? Oh, is that for me? You know I can't play right now. How can I say no to you? You're such a good girl. Okay, I'll play with you later. I'm gonna roll the ball once to you, and then I gotta film. Oh, okay, roll back. Good girl. What's that toy? What's that toy, Chaser? Let me see it. Oh, it's a pretty ball. Are you ready for your close-up, Chaser? Yes. My name is Jenny Cruz. I live in Nashville, Tennessee, and my dogs Lucy and Zelda are from Old Friend Senior Dog Sanctuary. Okay, Jenny, you just smile. Okay. Good. Actually, I found I found Old Friend Senior Dog Sanctuary. I was just scrolling through Facebook one day. This was in 2014, and I just thought it was a, a really cool concept. And so I reached out to them, and they brought me Lucy. First, I just got Lucy, and then they, this was sort of in the beginning stages still of the sanctuary. They weren't as big as they are now and didn't have the Facebook following that they have now. And I just started volunteering for little things here and there. So I started out doing that, and then they had a spot open on the board, and Zena knew that I was involved, because every time they needed a volunteer, I would pretty much be there. And so I think that she saw how how involved I wanted to be and asked me to be on the board. So I've been on ever since, and it's been great. She says, oh my gosh, if I look over there, there's a camera. If I look over here, there's a camera. You feel like they're in a home. And plus, the, the fact that they pay for the dog's bills. You know, even my dog that is not an old friend, every time I take him to the vet, $200, $300, it all adds up. And the fact that their care is, you know, all I have to do is supply food and love. She says, they don't have kids, but I have dogs, and they're dirty, too. Oh. Dogs are way too disposable in this society, and I hate that. People know that when you take a 10-year-old dog to a shelter, that there's a chance, a very, very high likelihood that the dog is going to be euthanized, but they do it anyway. That, that's the hardest part for me, is imagining that um, Lucy, sorry, I'm gonna get emotional about this, but imagining that, you know, these dogs gave love and loyalty to somebody for however long, and then they're just dumped like trash at a place that they're probably gonna be killed. Like, they don't deserve that. Sorry. <laughs> I'm a bit crazy dog lady sometimes when I talk about, talk about my dogs. <laughs> but yeah, I just, yeah, I just, I couldn't imagine, couldn't imagine doing that, especially knowing that they were probably gonna die alone and that's their last, you know, it wasn't even with a family, it was in a cold shelter somewhere and that's how they're gonna go out, they don't deserve that at all. It's kind of sad to see that everything emptying out in a way on this side, but very happy on the other side. Cool <laughs> Once we get over there, or uh, inside, we get to drive into the garage. Okay. I was in a really bad spot in my life, and I saw a job interview for a senior dog sanctuary, and I was like, I had no idea what it was, and decided. Why not check it out? Why not apply it? What, what's there to lose? And talked to Lori and Zena and got hired on that day. Um, this kind of thing is something that I did not think existed, but it is something that I have wanted to do since I was a little kid. Is this your dream job? Yes. 
Did you didn't realize it coming? <laughs> no. Even when I was doing the job interview, I was like, yeah, this, this seems nice. And then when I actually started working, I was like, I don't think it gets any better than this. I think you've got a friend. That's Coltrane. Hey, Coltrane. How important is the staff and volunteers? Oh, very important. They have, there's so many things that they have to be. They have to be enthusiastic. They have to have a positive attitude, all of those things. The dogs can pick up on attitude and vibes real easily. They have to get along with one another. They have to know, be comfortable around a lot of dogs. They have to be able to do a lot of things at a time. We don't, we work as a giant team. We don't have, although there's a little bit of separation of what everybody does, uh, everybody works together at the same time. So it's really important to have that uh, team feeling. Probably the most important things are the love of the dogs and the willingness to learn and the willingness to adapt to different situations and stay calm. back and their buddy's going crazy so maybe that's a good start okay you want him on the other side yeah okay here we go bud yeah you're gonna like it here We got a call from somebody. They own a hair salon in Donaldson, Tennessee. And they said there was this big old dog laying behind the hair salon. He wouldn't move. They didn't want to call animal control because they knew that wouldn't be, a, wouldn't be good for him. And they were wondering if we could help him out. But he was just laying on his side in the alleyway, all miserable, yeah. very unhappy. And they couldn't get him to move. And... We went and we said, okay, we got to get him in the car. How are we going to get him in the car? We opened the car. He hopped right in. So that was the thing he needed to get him going. But he was really, really, really badly matted. Now, Leo doesn't like to be groomed. So Leo doesn't always look so great. We have him actually cut down in the spring, let it grow all year and cut him down again. It's the only way we can really groom him without having to sedate him monthly, you know, to do grooms. They actually thought that he'd been hit by a car. So that's why he's always had that little limp, but now he probably has some arthritis. And then the rumor was he was living with a homeless guy who apparently moved on without him. So we took him to the vet. He got him all vetted up. That was the first time we got him shaved down. He looked just like a lion with his little tail thing and the big mane. So that's how he got the name Leo. And he's been with us ever since. So he's probably somewhere around 13 now. Mm -hmm. he may have been a little bit younger, may have been a little bit older, but he's an old guy now. Can you put your hands like on Leo's head or, you know, shoot, because right now I'm just getting kind of a close-up. I mean, he's part of our family. He's our fundraiser dog. He's a, he's, he's a working breed. <laughs> <laughs> and boy, does he know how to phone raise. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like I said, it's, it's a phenomenon that I'm not exactly sure we know why. I watch the insights on Facebook, of course, to see what's happening and so if I feel like we're losing people, I'll post a picture of Leo. <laughs> it brings everything back up. Wow. Yeah. Leo seems to be the rock star. Yes. It's that Roman nose, I think. <laughs> and if you look at him, right on top of his head here, lots of people comment that they can see a little tiny dog right in the middle of his forehead. And if you look closely, you really can, can see it. You can see the, the eyes and the nose, and the head. So that's kind of made him popular as well. But he has personality. He has a big smile. I think a great smile, yeah. I think a great smile is probably the biggest thing in a dog to <laughs> make him popular. This will be the area where we bring dogs, when we first bring dogs in, if they have to be separated from the other dogs, they can stay in this room. We'll also have, we have our medical room here. When our vet comes to visit, we'll use this room. We'll use it for isolation if a dog is sick and needs to be separated. And we love these old windows too. They open that. Just a 
again, just something from the past that you never see anymore. We have a huge warehouse space. Uh, maybe someday we'll use it for something more than warehouse, but right now it's great to have that warehouse space. We've got a lot of great donated things that are here right now. All of this shelf and all of that shelf, all donated to us. And it's things that we're going to be using real soon here. We got the yoga mats on top there that are good to put down for dogs that don't do well on, on uh, slippery surfaces. And then we have the puppy pads to cover the couches. Puppy pads and blankets, those and are blankets. very valuable things here. Who are your favorites? I know we're not supposed to have favorites. Oh, we're definitely not supposed to have favorites, but it's really hard to like nail down a couple favorites because they all have different personalities. In a way, they all become our favorites. I maybe have about 50 out of the 100 that are like a little above, but then it's still, there's just so many of them that are beyond, I can't pick one specific one and I can't even pick five specific ones. You can only take one dog home. That's the only dog you're ever going to see from this group again. Kirby. I have taken her home though before, so I, I like to take her home every once in a while. If something were to happen and I was never allowed to see any of them again, it would have to be Kirby. We will have an indoor run area for rainy days. We have several dogs that love to, uh, love to fetch. This will be a great fetching room for them. that most of the smaller dogs may not ever make it past this yard. It's a nice big yard. It's got a lot of shade. It's got a lot, a lot of interesting features for them. Uh, it'll be easier for dogs with mobility problems to walk on the brick and things like that. So this will be a very popular area for a lot of the dogs. A few years back, a gentleman by the name of James came to us and he wanted to live here. He was actually in the hospital and the doctor said he couldn't go home, he couldn't live alone anymore. But the only way that he would come is if he could bring his dog Izzy. He did not want to leave his dog. And so I went over to the hospital and I met with him and I assured him that his dog could actually come with him. And so the next day, the hospital transferred him and he came over here and he moved in a couple doors down from my office. About a month went by and he was not feeling well. And it's, you know, usually what happens is when somebody goes to the hospital, a family member will come pick up the dog and take the dog home. And he had no one to care for Izzy. So we kind of took it upon ourselves for those few days to take Izzy out. I got to where I started leaving his door open in his apartment and she'd peek her head out and she'd come in here and she would look around and the residents, they knew that she was alone too. So they wanted to take time and play with her and pet her and they were bringing her treats. <coughs> well, a few days went by and, and Jim passed away. So then we were overwhelmed with what do we do? You know, what's best for Izzy? And of course, you know, the residents did not want to see anything happen to her. She was, she was old. We were actually able to find a granddaughter that lived out in California who said that she would fly in and take care of Jim's affairs and told us that we could just let the dog go on to the pound. At this point, our residents were so attached to Izzy that there was no way that we could let Izzy go. So we started taking care of her. I brought her bed into my office and laid it down and left Jim's door open in his room and she would go back and forth from my office into, into his room. About a week after he passed away, I shut the door and she was able to adjust because our residents felt so sorry for her that they took up with her. They each came in one by one, they would bring her treats and they just loved on her and we knew that we had to leave Izzy here. There was no way we could do anything with Izzy. We had to leave her here. The residents were so attached at this point. She has become such a guardian of our residents. She sits at the door 
She watches everyone that comes in or out. She feels like it's her responsibility to care for our residents and protect them. You see it in the way she interacts with them. Um, if she thinks somebody needs help, like they're having a hard time getting up, she will come get one of us and whine. She lets us know when people want in or out. You know, she's, she's happy to greet anybody, uh, especially if they have a treat. She's just an, an awesome dog for this community with her owner having uh, oxygen and a walker. She's very well aware of those things. She stays out of the way of those. She's big enough that everybody can see her. But we've had residents who were in their last days of life and it's like she sensed it, went to the apartments, did a little visit, put her head on the bed where they could pet her on the head and then she would leave, you know, and she would just make those visits. It's, she senses it, she knows. The owner had told us that Izzy was around 10 years old. Um, so we estimate her age around 12 to 13. She's a senior dog. Um, some days she's more senior than others. A few years back, Izzy developed a growth on her foot and we took her to the vet and the vet said that unattended, without surgery, that we would have to eventually amputate her foot. We knew that that was not an option and we had to come up with the money to get her surgery. So since no one particularly owned her, it fell upon us to pay for that surgery. So I did a GoFundMe page, and within one day I raised enough money to take care of Izzy for the rest of her life and pay for her surgery. People from as far away as Seattle, Washington, were sending us money, sending messages and well wishes for Izzy. She's become a celebrity. An author contacted us wanting to know if they could put Izzy in their book of senior dogs. And she came down, she did an interview, and she put some pictures, and here we are with our book. Anytime Izzy goes to the vet or goes to the groomer, I have residents come up to me and say, where's Izzy, where's Izzy? They're so concerned about her. So now I actually have to put a sign up in our lobby that tells where Izzy's going. Because if I don't put that sign up, the residents are worried that something's happened to her. One resident feels like she is in charge of making sure Izzy has water. Says she doesn't like dogs, but she makes sure Izzy has water. They're always checking her food. If they think she doesn't feel well, they're coming to me. You need to check on her. Their purpose is to help take care of her. They like taking care of her. They like having her here. It's another purpose in life. You know, thank God he came here. He came here because um, without coming here, we don't know where she would have ended up. She's just been a great dog. She's been wonderful. Good girl, good girl. Okay, out. Chase. To chuck it, take frisbee. Do it, girl, do it. Hey, girl. Pop up, kick, chuck it. Good girl. When John is about to demonstrate the imitation, yeah. he says, what would you like to see Chaser do? So I go over, and instead of just saying it out loud, because Chaser is sitting there watching me, I literally go to John's ear, cover my mouth, and whisper into his ear. Because in my head, I'm thinking, Chaser can hear me and or probably read my lips. Chase, watch Pop Pop. Pop Pop call. You stay. Watch Pop Pop. <laughs> Pop up, Paul. You stay. Watch this was not set up. This was something off the top of my head that I whispered to John Paul. that he showed Chaser. Paul, you do it. You do it, girl. Do it. Do it. Yes, do it. Do it, girl. Do it. Do it. Go. Do it. Yes. Do it. Do it. Do it. Paul. Yes. Paul. 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 Yes, good girl. Do it. Do it. Boy. Yes, good girl. There comes Paul. Every time I would demonstrate, I would say, watch me. And I would use the words, do what I do. And she kept hearing this over and over again until finally there was the insight. Okay, what he wants me to do is what I see him do. So it required a mental inference. Pop, pop. Chase, you do it. 
do it, do it, do it. No, do what I did. Do what I did. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Again, again. Yeah, do it, do it, do it, do it. Do it, do it, do it. Here comes Paul. Can I ask you guys why you're going with a senior? Well, I mean, it's, everybody talks about doing it, but nobody actually does it. I think the biggest thing most people are afraid of is the monetary side of it with mm -hmm. medical, you know, bills and everything. So not really having to worry about that as much. It's like, why, why not really? I mean. And they're so sweet. Yeah. Why'd you pick her? Because um, she just seems so full of life yeah. <laughs> still. It just seems like a really fun dog. Get out of there, come on. Oh. You both want to sign both of them? Are you going to change your name? That is a cute name. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to keep it. I think she pretty much knows it. Like I think that was her name when she was turned in. I'm going to write Village Vet's number on here just in case you need to contact them. Does that feel good? Mm -hmm. But if you need to take her for any reason, just mm -hmm. let me know. If it's an emergency, just take her. Don't yeah. stop it. Call or ask anybody. Just take her, and we'll pay for emergency vet over the phone. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Anything for any reason you can't keep it, you can come back to us. Oh, okay. 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 So, and that's part of the stipulation with being a foster instead of the adoption. Mm -hmm. Um, is that she's always welcome back here. I love what you guys do here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're happy to do it. Yeah, you keep the dog. Yeah, this is happy. actually the best thing is when <laughs> they go to a home. Yeah. yeah. We love them here, but they need being home. Yeah. yeah. As my mom used to say, I kept getting used dogs. And I just got to thinking, I need another dog. I need a little old dog. And I was thinking lab to toddle around the house and just be cute. So I decided to submit my application to Xena. And so I was like, I'll have it on file. Well, about that time they had gotten Jack, a little black cocker spaniel who was 12. And I was like, I don't know if Zena thought I was applying for him specifically, but she caught that Hana was a spaniel mix, so she thought, well, maybe that would be a good match. So I've accused Zena of being my supplier now. Of used dogs. Of used dogs. My supplier of used, yeah. The one thing about older dogs is you've got their personality established, so you can find one that's going to fit with your family. You don't know with a puppy necessarily, and then you're dealing with potty training and puppy energy. You know... They're just sweet. They're like old people. They're sweet, and they need love, too. And tell us how you found old friends. Strictly on Facebook. Just, you know, other people that I know must have liked them or something, and you start following them. This was in 2013 that I got Jack, so that was... Still, old friends was pretty early back then, I guess. You can identify with the gray faces, and they're just sweet. You're just sweet, aren't you? Old dogs are awesome. They're chill. They need you. They know the value of, of love and ear scratches. It is sad to realize how many people do overlook the senior dogs. They're, you know, and grief is hard. It's not fun, but it's worth it. And so, but people are scared of it. They don't wanna, you know, I know so many people when they lose a dog, they say they don't wanna get another one. and. I'm the type that's gonna rush headlong back into it. Um, I had a friend one time who said, I can't, I can't have a dog, I'm too selfish. And my response was, I'm selfish, that's why I want a dog. I want somebody to greet me when I come home. I want the unconditional love sitting there waiting for me. Wilson County Animal Control told us until we came along, 100% of the seniors that came into their shelter were being euthanized. And then after that point, once we started working with them, we were taking 100% of their seniors. Before I started working here, I would have probably been with the rest of society and I would not have understood anything about senior dogs. I would have been, go get a brand new puppy. Go, well, you should adopt one, but you should go get a puppy. 
And then I started here and I was like, how are these guys seniors? Like, they are all older, but they don't seem like it. It seems like your regular two-year-old, three-year-old dog. I mean, they, they, they deserve to live just as much as that puppy does. I mean, I, I wish we could take in every dog that, that came in. Instead of, oh, you know, you gotta check on this kennel and make sure that this, it, you know, it's clean and stuff and take it out for, you know, take the dog out for a walk. It is, it's, that, that all is so impersonal. Here it's, these become our dogs. I don't have my dog at home. I have 115 here. I come in and I know their names and I know what they want and I know how they like to be petted, who likes to get played with in what way. And it, it's like coming to a second home. I don't feel like I'm going to work every day. All these things on the internet like, oh, I wish I, wish I didn't have to go to work, it's Monday. I'm like, I'm here on my off days because I needed to come see my dog. Like, I want to just come hang out with him for a little bit longer. It's terrible to see a dog come in like they do a lot of times but then give them a couple months and you look back at that dog and say, wow, look at you now, you know. Your, your mind is back to being a dog. It's not wandering off somewhere because you're not worried about where you're gonna sleep or eat. When we started our search for a new vet, we had to be very specific that just like our employees here, you need to come in and feel like these dogs are yours. You need to make sure that these dogs are having the absolute best care. So whatever it takes is what we want done. You know, I had this veterinary degree and I wasn't doing something, you know, that I felt was worthwhile for me. Um, and so I actually sold the practice because I wanted to um, pursue uh, shelter medicine or, you know, working with some of the animals that didn't have anybody to care for them. Uh, and I got a little bit frustrated on my job hunt, honestly, um, you know, with the euthanasias that were being done at the shelters. And I stumbled across uh, this position. We sold my practice in Connecticut. We moved here to Tennessee, never having stepped foot in the state um, because I felt like this was where I, I wanted to be. It has been like a match made in heaven. I mean, these are her dogs as much as everyone else's. She comes in. She says hi to all of her favorites on her way to her office. She, you know, we, we lost a couple of dogs this week. She cried with every single one of them. Like she wants all of these guys to have the best care it takes. We get attached to each of these dogs and it comes down to me to make the final decision. Our goal is really give them the best quality of life we can, uh, not throw every you know medicine we can at them if that's not going to help them. And so there's that challenge of balancing what's gonna be the best quality of life for that particular dog's um, personality and health. We have had quite a few that we were told, uh, they probably don't have that much longer. And she came in and said, watch this. And it's been fantastic to see the turnaround. You know, one of the other rewarding things about about this job is is that when these animals come in, you know, from from the local shelters, a lot of them were on the were brought into those shelters to be euthanized for you know the owners didn't want to take care of them anymore, or they had some sort of condition that the owner didn't want to deal with. To have them come in in the state that they were in and watch them flourish and gain weight and grow their hair back and you know be running around with toys and you know throwing balls and things like that, that's amazing to see too. I don't know how some people can't value these lives. I every day see a dog in here doing something that just makes me laugh hysterically. And you know, you just have to roll your eyes and go, well, how did somebody give this up? And some of the reasons they're given up to are just ridiculous. These people don't even know what they're missing out on. But when they get in here, they're totally, completely different dogs. Um, and, and I, you know, it just makes me think, how many do we lose because of that? You know, when if they were just in a different environment like this, they'd be totally adoptable. I think that everybody here 
at the sanctuary has the same common goal to make sure that these animals are well loved and respected and receive the optimal care and that we are a cohesive team to get that done. You know, when I get older and I become more, more trouble because it's harder for me to get up and down the steps and someone has to give me a hand that, you know, I'm just not gonna get tossed aside because of it. I just think they're a commitment, I think, uh, that you have for the rest of your life. Fun. <laughs> She's really sweet. She is. So this is little bear, this little guy. He is 11 years old. He's a Yorkie. And he is the boss of the household. He pretty much runs, <laughs> runs the house. We've had him since he was a puppy. Yeah, he's our, one of my favorite little senior dogs. And this is yeah. JC. She is nine years old. She'll be 10 in a month. She is very sweet. Yeah. <laughs> She's also very snuggly. She loves all people yeah. and she loves us. And she was mine. I've had her since she was about eight weeks old. And he, uh, my mom had him originally, actually, but he was also about eight or nine weeks old when we first got him, so. <laughs> yeah, I've known him. I, I lived out of the house for a while, but my mom was looking for a place for him to go, so we decided to, to take him. But these guys, have both they've both known each other since they were puppies. Yeah, well, these guys, I mean, we didn't really have a, you know, it wasn't a choice to get them as seniors, but definitely the evolution of having known them. It's been a really rewarding process. They're just, you know, they're like the joys of our lives. And I think too, the relationships are just so much deeper. You know, when yeah. you've known them for so long, they've known you and, you know, dogs are just so amazing. They're in tune with all of your needs. And, you know, if you're having a bad day, they just totally know and come curl up on you. and. If you're excited and happy, they're, you know, ready to run around with you. They just, they know us so well and we know them so well. And it's, it's just, yeah, like you said, they're the joys of our yeah. lives. They deserve a nice life and we take good care of them. And, you know, especially, yeah. you know, as dogs get older, their medical needs kind of ramp up. And I, I know that can be a hardship for a lot of people, um, but we've just tried to stay on top of it and we've, lucked out with our vets who have, you know, really Help, bonded yeah. with them and helped, helped us, us keep them healthy. Yeah. It's important to realize that just because you may be near the end of your life, it doesn't mean you don't deserve to, you know, have like a, an amazing quality of life for whatever time you have left, you know? And I think that there are lots of puppies that need homes, but you know, there are a lot of older dogs that have had to be you know, they've enjoyed homes and had to be given up or, you know, people just can't take care of them anymore. And I think there's something really special about being able to provide that specifically for a dog that, you know, like I said, they just, these guys just want this, you know, and there are old dogs all over the place that deserve to, you know, be comfortable and live, live out the rest of their days as comfortably as possible, really. Whatever the circumstances are for why a senior dog is being given up, you know, whether the owner passed away or financial hardship or whatever, these dogs have relationships with their humans and to think of, you know, how sad they must yeah. be to have lost that relationship and you can be that person to come in and change their life. It's, it's really rewarding and, you know, obviously I love these guys and I want to keep them around as long as possible. Her learning excites me when she discovers one of those 
aha moments, and it makes me want to keep working with her. Chaser, I'm, I'm looking for something that represented the dog and their relationship to Dr. Pilly. It could be a shot like this, that you know that the dog is looking up to John. But then I'd go back and I, like this shot too, because there's a definite connection here. I'd look at, you know, my selects together. So this one kind of speaks to me. Yeah, I think I'm gonna work with the, just get the color a little bit better. In this case, I use my eyedropper and I would just go over sort of a, a, a neutral white kind of like that. I call this my happy key over here. I don't know what it's really called, but it goes back. You can see where the colors changed. So th this is the original and um, that's what I changed it to. But I think I'd up the shadows. Mm. And you can see if I up on the shadow, on the shadow bar, and we can go to my happy key again. You can see how it's picked up some, some light, which then makes the dog pop more. I, I think because it's bothering me, I would crop the image next. And I'd probably crop up a little here too. And it, it just pops a whole lot better. You know, I, I, don't, I don't like to do too much unless I have to. I don't know, this works for me. Some of the Greeks in the past believed that children choose their own parents. We like to think that 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 uh, Chaser chose us. So every so often we get these just obscure emails that seem too good to be true, and nothing ever comes out of them. Um, and suddenly we get this email, and it's. Hey, we're video game developers. We're located in New Zealand, and we really love your sanctuary. We've been fans for a long time, and we try to do app-based games that focus around nature and the good things in life. And then we were really excited. We thought it'd be great, and they started sending us concept pictures. They said that they want to have the same positive outlook that we have, basically going to be that you have your own sanctuary. It's going to be based off of all of our dogs, so they want to have some of the dogs that may have already passed in the game just to kind of keep their memory alive and to kind of still talk about what, you know, what they went through. But you get to also help them find homes, pick and choose which ones stay in your sanctuary. They were thinking of only having a limit number of dogs, but then they got here and they were like, how can we not include every single one of these guys? And we saw some teasers of their game and it's amazing. I mean, there's a room with Leo and Captain Ron and every Kirby and they're all breathing and moving and it, it's it brought tears to my eyes because all of a sudden these dogs have been brought back to life. We got an email and the email said that a high profile person and we didn't know who it was wanted to come out and do something for old friends and they asked what some projects would be that might be good to uh, have somebody do for us. And of course, we had no idea of what they could do, so we had little projects, big projects. They came out, and in the course of about a week, there were enough people here to paint the entire building, paint all the fences. Uh, the day that Miranda Lambert was out here, they painted a, a really pretty bench that's out back. It was an amazing effort. There were people all over the building, <laughs> and, it, and it really gave the building a good, nice, fresh look. with the Springsteen tattoo. We got Springsteen after our second dog, Kilgore Trout, died in October of 2008. We went looking for a dog at a shelter from down south, and we found this 14-week-old puppy. We drive up in this blizzard to meet the transport truck, and we get this little dog. And it was funny because at first, I remember my wife said, that doesn't look anything like the pictures, but the minute he's put into our arms, we, you know, you, you fall in love with him. I was, went looking for seriously the most obnoxious puppy I could possibly find. And 
<laughs> Springsteen did not let us down in any ways. His birthday is September 23rd. And on my Facebook page, I just wish happy birthday to Springsteen. And all these other people everywhere are wishing happy birthday Springsteen. And I'm kind of confused as to why thousands of people are wishing my dog a happy birthday <laughs> until I realized that it's also Bruce Springsteen's birthday. And yes, they share the same birthday and that's a complete coincidence. They easily have a thousand dollars or more of toys lying around this house. But his favorite toy is an empty paper towel roll. He'll just like run around the house. It's this circle of from the kitchen to the living room to the dining room, back to the kitchen. And he'll just run in circles with this thing, stop in front of me, I take it, I throw it, he picks it up, runs again, keep repeating and repeating about six or seven times, and then he just plops down and starts ripping at the shreds. I, I have never seen anything give this dog more joy than an old paper towel roll. It's a weird relationship because as they get older, I mean, when, when they're younger, when they're puppies, they're very cute. But as they get older, they really do develop a personality and you get to know them as they get to know you. The whole cliche about the dog being your best friend, cliches are cliches for a reason often and it's, it's, it is based in truth. When we come home from vacation and Springsteen and Dylan are not here, the house is empty. It's almost like I don't like my house without the dogs. I'm including Springsteen in this film because by the time I started making it, he was pushing 10 years old. And I was realizing that for a lab, he was a senior. None of our dogs have ever made it to 13. They've always seemed to pass in their 12th year. Um, Springsteen's going to be 11 next month and, and that, uh, that scares me, it really does. He will be the hardest when he passes. You're not supposed to have favorites, but I just love this dog. Though I've made the vet promise me that he will live forever. So I, I you know, hope I don't have to change vets because he, he lied to me about that. When I hear about people dropping off senior dogs to a shelter, I'm basically mortified. A 12 year old dog is supposedly 84 years old. Would you want to be 84 and just, your family says, you know what? You're kind of getting difficult to deal with. And they just put you in a cage somewhere where if some other family doesn't take you, you're gonna be put to sleep. I don't know how someone can be that cold hearted when you see the amazing things that senior dogs can do and how smart they still are and how full of life they still are, uh, we, they, should, they deserve as much love as any puppy. Okay, Jakey, here's our loud one. <laughs> You're gonna get this whole crowd all barking, aren't you? I know you are. Okay. Very good. You need a little help? Oh, big brown. You got them. <laughs> Come on, big boy. I'm so glad that they do this <laughs> because these dogs wouldn't have a chance anywhere else. We love that they make it into the Forever Foster, and there are so many unique aspects to this program because the Forever Fosters don't ever have to worry about the financial aspects of this dog's care either. So for, you know, maybe senior citizens on a fixed income or college students that maybe are struggling with their income, they can have that companion and not have to worry. And we've just saved a life. And they fit in perfectly in, in those homes because they're quieter and they're calmer. And, you know, you don't have this crazy puppy running around and chewing everything up and they're so settled. So I think what they've done is amazing. It's been amazing how much we've grown since you were here first. It's 110 dogs. We've been placing probably five or six a, a week. And so, which is what we do and we're excited about it because that, that makes more room for more dogs. 
changes about the only constant around here. If we think back to even five months ago, because sometimes me and my leads will talk about, well, we used to do this, and it was like, no, that was five minutes ago. This is what we're, we found works better now. And again, we realize the, the reality of it. We won't be able to do that in another 10, 15 years, but we're uh, going on and we're looking forward to lots of big changes. And it's little things, it's big things, it's everything. Michael and Zena are just rock stars. Zena really is the driving force of this entire place. Uh, she, you know, she's just got a great heart, great mind. <laughs> I would like Chaser's legacy to be the story of a dog that shows us without any doubt a dog's ability for mental processes and very, very strong emotions. That's my hope of what's going to happen. And I think it is happening. What have you learned from Chaser? I've learned to be more patient. I've learned to try to figure out how she can learn to communicate more with me and understand my communications. But she's just a joy, push come to shove. She's, she's a child in our family, always giving. But sometimes, as you can see, uh, asking us to do what she wants that we don't understand. You're still a mystery though, aren't you? Yes. We really didn't in the beginning equate old dogs kind of getting saved with we're kind of starting an old dog center here just like we do for our older people and we never equated the two because we were focusing in on just saving old dogs and and then people started seeing us as a nursing home for old dogs Zena originally she said you know what I think We'll just take pictures of old dogs and we'll post them on Facebook. And I said, Zena, I'm sorry. I'm always the, the doomsayer. I said, nobody wants to see pictures of old dogs. They have their own pictures and their own old dogs. Well, you know, shame on me. Boy, was I wrong. Oh my God, it was bigger than I ever thought it could be five years ago. <laughs> so this has just skyrocketed. We have a workshop that we give every year. And one of the things I tell them in the workshop is don't box yourself in with goals and plans and everything, kind of go with the flow. See what feels right, see what's working, see what's not working and go with the flow and you never know where you're going to end up. But don't set limits because if we had set limits, we may never have gotten to where we had gotten. I just think that once these dogs have reached a certain stage in their life, you know, dogs, people too. I mean, I just think it goes probably along with, you know, not just dogs, that, um, you know, they, they understand who they are. You know, they're, they're just more grounded. You know, they have manners. They don't need to go on, you know, five mile hikes. They'd like, a, you know, a leisurely stroll is nice. What they need is not that much, but yet, what they're willing to give you is that much more. There's a world, a world that's not so hard, where the dark is lit with sparks, like headlights on a car. She's moving through my trees. Some will rise, some will rise.